So, you might have seen me delete my two videos, and you're probably wondering why. Well, eh, let's just say that if you're trying to make a kid-friendly channel, cursing probably isn't the best idea. So, since it is so close to Halloween, I thought I'd do something a little bit, uh, spooky. From one of the worst tour lines, in my opinion, ever to be released by Transformers. Well, second to Titanium, but I'm not even going to go there. So, this is Transformers Animorphs, Mega Glass... Visser 3 and ooh man I was so happy when I found this toy because in the door behind this uh, some friends of my parents were cleaning out a house and they were paying us to help out with the um, uh, cleaning process well when I was cleaning out this one room I happened to find this guy and a few scattered parts so I reassembled him and uh, I got to keep him yeah pretty cool uh on eBay, this guy goes for around 24 bucks, so to find this guy for free, that's a good deal. I mean, granted, he's missing well, his two accessories, which I will not describe at the moment. So, yeah, let's get down into this guy. Now, this is some, uh, uh, when the Beast Wars engineers were around, so they weren't screwing around when it came to molding. Because, uh, they, they, knew, they knew how to get this stuff down. I, I said engineers, I mean designers. But yeah, I mean, there is, uh, you got, like, fur and muscle mass... I mean, this guy looks like a bruiser. I mean, look at that chest. I mean, that detailing. I mean, you got all those skin folds, and, um, uh, and the, the airbrushing is also really nice. I mean, you don't see that nowadays. And you got the little Animorphs mold symbol. Just a little A and crest, and you got the trademark right there. Uh, the claws are actually pretty nicely detailed. I mean, with the gold um, uh, pads and the um, actual ra razor-sharp bits. And the, um, uh, well, the legs are pretty much the same story. They are muscle and fur. But the head. Ooh, that head. Such a nice head. I mean, look at that. I mean, he's got these soulless white eyes. These massive teeth that just jut out of his jaw. These two massive airbrushed horns. It's impressive. I mean, even from the back, this guy's actually pretty solid, considering he has a whole other mode to contend with. Which is, uh... One of the good things about Animorphs, they they knew how to get a beast mode without any visible kibble, which is more than I can say for Beast Wars, which uh, I think it was actually pretty bad when it came to kibble. I and mean, you can see a lot of stuff out of those guys. Granted, them, uh, when they sold the actual animals. So you're probably wondering, how big is this guy? Well, this is a Mega Class toy, which is nowadays would be considered a Voyager, but I don't have any beast modes the size of this thing. This is his alternate mode. So, here he is next to Darksteel. And, um, uh, he's a little bit shorter than Darksteel, but that's just because he's got this hunch, thanks to this massive neck. So, these guys are approximately the same size, although Darksteel does happen to be a little bit broader. So, this guy, he's got plenty of joints. His head... It's got um, a, a swivel from side to side, but because it's such an angle, it really doesn't do much. It's got a hinge for upward movement, but too far up, and it gets kind of weird looking. And uh, you can't open his jaw, although I wouldn't recommend it about that far, because you open it anymore, and oh god, you just broke his mouth. He's got ball-jointed shoulders, which, seeing how this guy was released in 1998, and these things are tighter than some of the more recent figures I have, that's quite impressive. He's got a bicep swivel, double jointed elbow, uh, no waist, ball jointed hip, uh, thigh swivel, and uh, digital grade legs. His main colors are this maroon, uh, this reddish orange, and the gold. Now he did, or he should, come with two accessories. A missile, which would um, uh, go in this, this arm to complete the symmetry of the little rod coming out for, let me get the gimmicks, and a little yurg bug, and if you don't know the story behind Animorphs, I mean, if you're in elementary school, I mean, your, your teacher's bound to have them on the bookshelf, mine did, there were stories about kids who um, uh, got this ability from aliens, so to speak, to um, uh, turn into any creature they touched. Now, I'm not sure if it worked with humans, but I sure as heck know it worked with animals and other species of aliens. So, basically, if they touched your dog, they could turn into your dog. Or at least a lookalike of your dog. 
And they came from the species that this guy is, Visser 3, who was the... Um, I'm not going to say leader of that particular species, but in the story, he is the main villain. Possessed by a yerg bug, which are little brain slugs that crawl inside your ear canal and uh, basically take over your brain. The worst part is, you're still conscious. So yeah, I'm going to get that out of the way. It's basically a story about kids who can turn to animals. So what better toy lion to do it than Transformers, you know... They do animals transforming into stuff at the time, all the time. So it was bound to work out. At least that's what they thought until the toy line crashed. So, for gimmicks, uh, this guy wouldn't have a missile launcher. Then the trigger is right on the bottom of his arm. Fits in pretty smoothly with everything. Pretty streamlined. And then, what about this thing? Doesn't have a missile launcher, so to speak. But instead, has a grabby claw. Which, uh... Can't really grab on the much. So I'm gonna see, we got, we got like a we're gonna have something like that. Uh, uh, well, uh, you can kind of hold on to a Lego brick, but so this creature is supposed to be an inferno beast, which uh, I, I guess the colors kind of get that across. But for for an, an inferno beast, I was expecting it to be more of a you know, rock-like or something that would be less immune to the effects of fire. You know, and not have fur. If you excuse me for a minute, I gotta go deal with something. I am now back after my dog seemed to have gotten all hyper. So, what about this guy's transformation? Oh, well, I guess I couldn't call it much of a transformation. It's more of a morph. I don't know what you call it, but... Yeah, no, this chest panel's a little floppy. What am I expecting? This thing's older than I am. Okay, so first we have to come to the back, grab this tail-looking section, fold that down, then fold it down the hinge. Right there. I'm uh, going to come to the front again, and split the chest, and I'm uh, we're going to then come to the back and extend the arms, which will cause this weird-looking head to spring out. We're then going to rotate these sections back and try to get them lined up with this part right here. You know, like, get them lined up as good as you can. And I'm, uh, we'll work with these sections later, but just, I'm, uh, for now, oh, that, that's not good. We're gonna want to fold the, um, uh, Inferno Beast, uh, legs up, and then fold up the heel spurs onto his calves. Well, not calves, or shins, or whatever. Anyways, we're just gonna close up the chest panels to form the rear of this mode, and then fold the tail up, and that should, I'm gonna secure everything in place. I'm gonna come to the Inferno Beast arms, and just get them into a position where they are on the same level as the Inferno Beast legs, and as you can see, we're pretty much almost done. So, we're gonna come to the Inferno Beast, and we're just gonna straighten out the head, which is why the horns, um, which one you straighten all the way out, looks weird. I'm going to fold this in between the Inferno Beast legs, and ho what I like to do is, because the jaw is molded in a specific way, it fits perfectly, on, well, if you can get it, on the Inferno Beast crotch, and it helps make it look less like a um, uh, head sticking out of a weird alien's groinal area. And then, for the uh, this guy's arms, I'm going to rotate these around, snap them in place, and then just rotate the arms down, and I'm going to flip out these panels. And there you have it. There is Visser 3. In his, um, uh, uh, base mode, or... I have no idea what to call this, in all retrospect. Um... Man, this is really stumping me. I mean, on a Transformer, you'd call this a robot mode, but... This isn't much of a robot. It's like an alien bug fish centaur thing. With a scorpion tail. Yeah, this, this I'm a, I can, a, Andalite? Yeah, Andalite. This is what the species is, and this is the species that has the power to um, turn into animals. This isn't the guy who gave the power to the main protagonist in the show. 
That was a different one that died in, like, the first book. The uh, first episode. This is a, from the TV show that these guys came from. Uh, yeah. I don't know what to say about this. I mean, from what I can tell, it's one of the best from the line, but, uh, it's got his faults. Yeah, we're gonna begin. Size comparison. That's a good start. So he's not as big as a Voyager. More of a, in this form, he's more height wise, uh, about the size of a deluxe. But, um, uh, that does extend out quite far. Now, for articulation in this mode, I'm not going to cover the legs because you already know what's going on there, but the ball joint right here is limited now. It can't do anything. Head doesn't move because it's on this little springy platform. You're probably wondering. But they do this all the time now. Back in 1998, not so much. Yeah, you were lucky if you got an automorph head to actually rotate. Um, uh, we got ball joints in the shoulders. And they are supposed to tab in, but um, as you can see, they don't really like to. You have a bicep swivel, and then you got 180 degree elbows, but they are the floating hinge kind. Which, on a robot, I guess I couldn't have much issue with, because, you know, they're not supposed to have human-like joints. They're aliens. And yes, this guy may be an alien, but he's organic. Not robotic. So this... This doesn't work. Also, what is this? This is kibble on an organic creature. I mean, I, any other Andalite toy, even the Ultra-class... Uh, Visser 3. He doesn't have cable flaps. He doesn't have much of anything. But this guy... This guy manages to ruin it right out of the starts. I mean, come on. I mean, I know the humans weren't... I mean, I know the humans were kind of the real cable issues, but they didn't have panels floating off of their elbows. The tail also does not have any articulation. It just kind of just sits there. Most of the details are the same, but now we get a better view at the neck area, which has formed the torso. And, um, uh, it's got a nice gradient effect. I mean, the fur on this guy makes a little bit more sense, since he is kind of centaur-like. You'd think he'd have fur like a horse. But he's also got this armor plating on his chest, which uh, kind of goes in with his insectoid-like head. Well, let's just get a closer look at that head, if I can. Uh, the paint on the upper eye stalk is a little bit, um, uh damaged uh, it's just due to age but it's a nice uh yellowish green shade you got these little fins and this weird little mouth void looks like some sort of scp but it's pretty decent and the amount uh, now we got a better look at the tail we can see it's got this nice little gold tip it is made of a rubbery plastic to prevent breakage much like the head is which is a good thing, because I don't think you'd want your children gouging their eyes out. One thing I do have issue with is getting all four of the beast legs on the, on the ground, because this this leg right here, with the um, uh, grabby claw gimmick, it doesn't fold in as tightly as this one, so getting it in a proper position is slightly more difficult. But it is not impossible. You can get all four legs on the ground. You just, you gotta work for it. Now, would I recommend this guy? Well, if you're in the Transformers, but you're not a big fan of organic stuff, you might want to skip this. But if you are a fan of obscure toys that no one really seems to mention that much, yeah, I, I go get them. If you can find them on eBay for a decent price, definitely. You won't be missing much if you don't get the Yurg bug. It's you're, if, if you keep it around a child, they're more likely to mistake it for some kind of like gummy worm and eat it. But if you can find the missile, uh, I would definitely recommend it because this is this is the point in time where they had really powerful spring-loaded launchers and not those little, like little crappy friction fire missiles. So, yeah, this is um, a Animorphs Mega Class Visser Three. And uh, this is Nightmare in 53 with a little bit of a soft reboot. And uh, I will catch you uh, later, I guess. Don't know what my next video is, but hey, feel free to comment on what you want to watch.
and point out any obvious flaws I might have my review set up. I'm still working out the kinks. Just give it, give it some time. Give it some time.